Today, I'm teaching you how I took a coffee dessert wine kit and turned it into a pretty dang good tasting mead. Let's get started. So I was walking through the homebrew store. You can track with me if you have a local homebrew store. And in the clearance section, they had a coffee dessert wine kit. Now, obviously it was a wine kit, grape based, and it was, I saw coffee and my brain started flashing with all these great ideas. And being a mead person, I was like, I have honey to do something with this. So I picked that wine kit up. You can see a picture of it on screen and I got to work. So I decided let's go ahead and throw some interesting kind of honey into this thing. I wanted to use, uh, well, I had Ule Blossom Honey, which is a tropical honey. And then I had some, I believe it was wildflower, or clover honey, sorry, clover honey is the other. So Ule and clover, I'll put up a recipe card. It's kind of a rough estimate, to be honest, because I don't know exactly all of what was in there. Like there's some weird stuff in this dessert wine kit. Um, so there's that recipe card, roughly what it was. I don't know that you're gonna go recreate this, because again, there's some very custom flavors coming from this. We opened up that wine kit and it had a slew of things, including a coffee uh, finishing, I can't remember what they called it, finishing something solution, not solution, that'd be dangerous. Finishing sauce, something weird like that in this big old plastic baggie, of course. Uh, Chitosan and Kisa salt for clearing. We had bentonite in that thing. We had our grape juice base, which I don't know what kind of grape juice it was. So don't get technical with me. And uh, Lauvin EC1118. And I thought that was interesting. I went ahead and pitched it anyways, cause that's what the kit recommended. I don't know that I would always recommend that for a pie mint, but alas, that's what we did. So after we got all of those ingredients, we went ahead and basically mixed up this grape juice, which was about, I think, two and a half to three gallons two gallons of grape juice, topped it up to five with water. We added um, all of our honey in and just stirred it like crazy. I knew this thing was gonna be sweet and I wanted it to be sweet because it's a dessert wine or dessert pie mint in this case. So it started at 1.124. The Lauvin EC1118 is a beast that is intended to ferment through a lot of sugar and um, it actually did. We ended up going dry with this thing after the primary. So 1.124 and all the way to 1.000. We'll talk about that here in a second. But what's important here is the wine kit we started with, I wanted to make it to the, the pie mint. So I added that honey. It, in order for this to be a pie mint, you have to add some honey. So we did. And then we mixed it up. Took, we took a gravity reading, which is very important for knowing how alcoholic your brew is also to be safe and not a silly mead maker that gets yourself in trouble with bottle bombs. So we took a gravity reading. We finished mixing everything up. I had rehydrated my yeast with some go firm and just gave it some time to wake up. After we added our yeast, we closed it off and we let it start fermenting. Now I don't have any documentation of what it looks like to ferment, but I'll just go ahead and spell it out for you. It looks like bubbling in, in a carboy. And cause I put this in a plastic fermenter, I could see the bubbling. Over time, I saw the bubbling slow down, not a total indicator that this was done fermenting, but it says that it's slowing down some. You'll notice normally the yeast and all the chunky stuff will start to flocculate at the bottom of the brew. So I noticed that about this, about three and a half weeks in, it had basically a large layer of sediment at the bottom. I knew it was time to rack that into a new container. So that's what we did. We racked it into a new container and we let it set for just a couple more days. It had finished at 1.000 because we took another gravity reading to compare the two. So this thing is setting at a pretty steep ABV. We're up in the 16, 17% range, um, which I think I labeled it wrong. You'll hear about that later on in the tasting. In order for this to be sweeter, the Lauvin EC1118 can still ferment through more sugar because it's a, it's a wild kind of yeast. So we needed to stabilize it. We stabilized it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. 
The, the combination of those halts any further fermentation, which allows us to actually add more sugar safely, that is uh, fermentable at least. So that's what we did. We added our potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite. It turned out to be about five Camden tablets worth and two and a half teaspoons of potassium sorbate to totally stabilize this thing. If you don't want to do that, you can always pasteurize. Once it was stabilized, I, I was like, okay, I want sweetness, but then I realized I wanted also some oak character, so I did this in kind of inverted way. I added my oak before back sweetening. I knew I was gonna be adding that coffee flavoring jug, uh, pillow looking thing into this brew. I knew that was gonna be a lot of sugar, so I decided to do that last. I was rifling through all of my oak options and I found I had some um, mocha oak chips, which mocha oak chips are kind of interesting. Uh, they're not like mocha barrel, but they're a proprietary, I'm reading off the thing. They are a proprietary blend of French and American oak, it says medium toast enhances chocolate and fruit flavors. Unique toasting process reaps higher intensity caramel, mocha, and coffee flavors. Obviously that all sounds perfect for a coffee pint. So we added one ounce of those chips into this brew and we let them set for like two weeks. I mean, it was a solid amount of time on the oak chips. After two weeks of just letting those chips be in the brew, we then decided to rack off of those and we went ahead and added our flavoring. So that flavoring went in and I just dumped the whole thing. The instructions on the kit say, you know, if you want to go less sweet, you could do half of it or a quarter of it. I just went full Monty all the way in. I, I didn't take a final gravity reading for this thing as I'm looking back on my stuff, at least on my notes. If I took one somewhere backwards, I'll let you know. But this thing ended up pretty dang sweet after adding this coffee syrupy kind of stuff to it. I imagine it was probably in the 1.02 to 1.0 three zero range of final gravity. It's pretty dang sweet. At that point, I was not gonna add more honey because that would have been cloyingly sweet and not that great. So we had our, our piment base with our honey in there, which tasted pretty good. It was dry. We stabilized. We added mocha oak to add some, of course, oak character. We got some of that caramel richness, the um, coffee note from that, the mocha oak from that oak itself. And then we added the coffee flavoring. I let that kind of set and anything settle down that didn't get mixed in for some reason. Let it set for a couple more weeks and it was time to bottle. So we went ahead and bottled them into a ton of bottles. And as you'll see kind of some of that, and we, we just kind of let it ride. This mead is only like four or five months old. And I know some of you are, are uh, already screaming in the comments about how that's crazy. This is a 16% mead and there's no way it's gonna taste good. I'm gonna let the tasting speak for itself because I've already done it. I had a fantastic couple join me and you're gonna get to see them here in a second. They uh, had a great time, I had a great time. I hope you've enjoyed this. Kind of unorthodox sort of mead so far. Let's jump into that tasting. Uh, uh, Nathan, Carissa, welcome to the YouTube channel for a tasting experience. I'm super glad I could get to share um, a bottle of mead with some award-winning mead makers and get their feedback. So thanks for having us, man. Thank you. So I, I kind of briefly explained this to you and people who are watching my YouTube video have uh, seen this, but it's a, a coffee wine kit that has been converted into a, well, pime it because it's wine. And then mocha oak and some weird coffee flavoring. So we're pretty young, honestly, for this tasting. So all the YouTube commenters can go ahead and start typing their griefs at me. Um, <laughs> you but, gotta wait the whole year. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one, don't worry, you'll see. Some Someone's gonna comment that. But uh, I, I just wanna know what you guys think. If you guys get much from it much coffee it's a very unique experience in the how it was used you talk about the nose first Man, I really she's got that. a really good nose i have a terrible nose oh yeah admittedly yeah yeah so i am it's getting... all i told her 
she was she was making fun of me for my big nose a while back and i was like maybe it's all for show it doesn't work real <laughs> yeah it my nose gets me in trouble though i i will smell a burp from the next room so, and it's... pros and anyway. cons pros and cons, <laughs> yeah, pros so, and cons but... so what's your nose telling you i can't wait to try this um right. i'm Same. getting um basically i'm getting almost like a a Definitely a flavored coffee, and it kind of reminds me of a tiramisu. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. It smells like tiramisu to me. It it's no, it's definitely like a tiramisu treat with that coffee sprinkled on top. That yes, it, that feels, right. it smells really rich. Mm -hmm. Um, like Very like sweet. when I smell it, it almost smells like a like a syrup. Yeah. Like it's, I don't know if it is or not. It's 14%, but it smells like it's going to be sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, I think it smells like a dessert, like a chocolatey. I, I don't get a whole lot of, yeah. of grape, like wine character, though. No. Um, I almost want to do a reduction with it. Just to... <laughs> we, we say that a lot. We <laughs> yeah. like, oh, we gotta, we've tried it a couple times and it's been really good. It turns huh. out amazing. We did a reduction on a cherry one that we ended up pouring on our pancakes it was so oh, good that sounds but, good um, all right so we should probably taste no it. this one definitely smells like a like a tiramisu or some type of dessert chocolatey, dessert. chocolatey coffee yeah well to those marks in that's that's kind of the point of it so i hope that cool. check one we'll see if yeah. we check two here we go that's Really fantastic That's from really start good. to finish man that's really good yeah i get a lot more um grape character mm -hmm. like the acid of the grape yes. kind of cuts through really really well yeah we'll try that again yeah i totally agree there's definitely grape in it there's a little bit of especially on the back end there's some coffee that comes through it's really nice that's really freaking good man yeah, <laughs> yeah i like that a lot um, this thing's pretty pretty hefty. I feel like the body side it, is, um, you know, you mentioned syrup, and it feels like almost syrupy. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It doesn't have like a cloying quality to it to me. Um, it definitely like when I have mead like this, I I just want to have like a bowl of vanilla ice cream next to it. Yeah, right. You know, like this is really 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 good. The color's really nice too. It kind is. Of, it's a very pretty color. It's got kind of like a so really dark red, purple. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like a burgundy almost. Mm. Well, I don't know. Is yeah. burgundy more purple undertones? I think so. Maybe maroon. Man, that yeah, that's really good. Um, I do. I do like the. Well, I, here's my question: Is do you get any? oak character floating around in there because there was oak used and i used interesting i, I thought it'd be more interesting to use like a um kind of coffee-esque oak so i found this mocha oak chips that were a blend of a couple different ones and then had some like i don't know toasting or some magic properties put on them to be mocha style do you get anything like that from this i think i do um for uh, i really like um BC when he when he does that uh, flavor uh, graphic, yeah, uh -huh. I think that I try to visualize that when I'm tasting things. I think that's a genius way to think about it. Um, for me, it's kind of like it's really chocolatey and rich up front, and then it kind of splits from there and goes like I get a lot of grape, and yeah, I think I get a little bit of oak creeping in there too, but it's hard to pull it apart a little bit with all those other flavors going on. Yeah. But I think it's in there. It's, it's, you know, it's for me, my, it's a little hard to parse everything apart. It's, 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 there's a lot going on and it's all really good. Yeah. There's yeah, a lot so going on. I don't get a whole lot of, I don't, I can't differentiate what's the oak from what's the coffee taste. Mm. Um, and plus what's just, what's the taste of it being so new? Um, it's true. Yeah, you said this is uh, February 23, so it's, yeah. it's July, so March, yeah. April, May, June, July, five months, 14%. I, 
I think it's really good it for is, it is five really months, good. you know, I mean, I still want to do a reduction. Did, on did you try it before this? Um, yeah, last time I tried it was when I bottled it, which was two and a half, three months ago at this point. So, I mean, it was very young at that. I mean, it's like two and a half. How, so question for you, how do you think it's changed? If it's changing, what do Mostly, you think? Uh, alcohol has mellowed out enough for things to start popping out because the problem was there was so much uh, presence from that alcohol that it was like you got this burn and then you're like trying to find the coffee and it had coffee notes and sweetness but you're like I can't figure out what else is happening with something that's 14% my brain automatically goes because of uh, maybe trauma from YouTube comments that you should be aging it you know for at least 12 months before you even look at it again so the fact that it's it's mellowed out somewhat in that five month period is um is kind of nice. Yeah, I I think it's really good, man. If you had hadn't put a um, a date label on it, um, and if we do any more tastings in the future, it might be something to think about. Put like some masking tape over the date, mm. yeah. and then we can kind of remove that thought or idea. But to me, this tastes fantastic for five months and for all of the stuff that you got going in there you know it's you can pick them apart pretty easily the honey i think that that's a little hard to pull out yeah. the notes of the honey just because there's you know the big bold flavor of the mocha oak and the the chocolate yeah, yeah. um but it i think it's more of a mouth feel with the honey on that i don't know how much you back sweetened it but not um, much it, honestly that when i dumped about a what felt like a gallon of copy sweet sugar i was like i don't know if i'm gonna put much more honey in this thing because so i think that would have helped but it also would have made it cloying at that point and i don't right. want to drink yeah. something that's cloying right yeah. and i was just about to say the balance on this thing is like it's right really there good. i think it's solid solid made right there yeah um yeah i, I think i think you hit it out of the park on this one man this is thank you <laughs> did it you make so did you make a big batch or a small batch? this was a a five gallon I think so I got a bunch of bottles of it and they're just sitting and waiting waiting I guess they're gonna sit a little bit lo sit a little bit longer because hopefully they get even better yeah. with some more time well to your point about um you know YouTube commenters and everybody has their own opinion with anything in life um with as, as regards to time and patience and waiting um I think I watched a video a long time ago with I'm trying to remember his name. I'm going to butcher it, so correct me. Um, is it like Storm Before Dawn or yep, something? Yep. Yeah. I don't know personally, but I watched one of his videos, and, and he seems pretty knowledgeable. And in one of his videos, he said something like a, a decent rule of thumb was for every 2% ABV weight month, hmm. which, which I think is a pretty decent rule of thumb, you know, in general <laughs> practice. Like, so this is 14% seven months it's probably gonna be i mean it's already good we're five months in you know yeah so, but yeah that's that's a good one because it's it, it makes it more realistic too it's really uh depressing when you're like oh, i made this thing and i'm super excited to drink it and somebody's like nope you're not gonna do it <laughs> don't even think about drinking it for Wait. another year <laughs> <laughs> it's like the scene of braveheart hold hold <laughs> yeah. <Cut> to that. <laughs> Oh, well, I appreciate you guys being a part of this tasting, and um, I want to shout out, we got lots of things happening here, but we just did a podcast, um, Nathan, Chris, and I just did a podcast episode, if you want to go check that out. Um, I don't know on the timeline of things when things will be posted, but hopefully they'll be about the same time. You can check them out and hear about their story, hear about their mead making process and progress, and um, hear what's led them to be award-winning mead makers from year to year. And so they have a lot of great advice and it was a lot of fun to chat with them there. And it's long form. So if you want a long form chat, that's not just a short YouTube video, you get to hear them there. But thank you guys for being part of this tasting. Yeah, man, this is a lot of fun. Um, like I said, it's always good to see you, see what you're doing, see what you're up to. And um, it's just an honor to be here with you chatting about making mead um, and, and following you guys since pretty much the beginning so yeah. this is pretty pretty wild how our paths have crossed so thanks wild having. thank you guys for being a part of the tasting and uh 
appreciate you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Mm-hmm.